you co-opt or build yourself or how did, how did you go ahead how did you manage the, the to the bill to get the the question the question is yeah, do any of us live in, in co-ops or self-builds or any of these sort of alternative models already and how do we how do it um, I, can, I can answer my end, but I can uh, uh, basically I, I, I uh, live in an existing housing co-op, so that is a membership process, and that's been going since the 70s, um, so it's, it's quite a long established one. So, I mean, there are, there are lots of housing co-ops in London, but they're very much scattered around. They're not actually, you know, they're not always, always easy to find where they are, who they are, because they're kind of under the, under the surface, but they exist. Um, and then, <coughs> obviously, when you know the co-ops, then one can apply. They have a sort of membership process, um, and yeah, it's worth doing just sort of process itself. And you might be able to move into a co-op and sort of yeah, work in that democratic structure. Um, yeah, I'm a member of a housing co-op that I've mentioned before. Was we started in 2010, <coughs> and I. Uh, been part of that co-op from the start, uh, so I can tell the story about how that happened. Perhaps Susie Asprey would want to know more detail. Um, but um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple of sort of things to point out when we talk about uh, the housing co-op movement, particularly in London, which is a, there's a whole load of housing co-ops that were set up in 1783 with government grant money at that time. Uh, and those co-ops, as well as being cooperatively owned and managed housing, they're also social housing. And most of them, with the exception of the one that James is in, have restrictions on who they're allowed to admit to their membership based on social housing criteria. So you have to have an identified person who is from the local authority to get in. Um, but I'm a member of a co-op that was set up without any government funding, uh, without any restrictions on, on, on who can become part of our co-op. And that was very much a choice. As I said at the beginning, we're a bunch of people who met in a pub story behind that. Um, but what we do, because we are in this capitalist system, is uh, we provide housing at full market rent. Um, so we bought a property on the open market, we borrowed the money to buy that property from a mortgage company. Um, and we live there, we own and run it ourselves, and we do all sorts of things, cooperative as well, just living there, you know, we have you know, bulk food buying and you know, we, we sort of apply apply the property principles throughout our, our living together, um, and it has ups and downs. But personally, it works for me. I've been there for three years. I'm not thinking of leaving anytime soon. Um, but the, 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 the setup of, of our organisation is, is basically, you know, we we we're just a, a pawn in this in this capitalist market, just like anybody else that's been at home. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I actually, I'm living on a site down in Heathrow called Burgess Road, uh, which is an off-grid site. It was a derelict bit of land that wasn't being used, and we've been there for uh, four years now. Uh, we're currently in the process of setting up a community land trust so that we can try to buy the land, um, and, and we've got like big plans for what we could do if we actually own it, but we don't own it.
whole issue is very clouded. And clearly, some of you have made inroads into that. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to know, if, you know, what we could do as a group. Then, if you're telling us to act on it and do something about it, mm -hmm. um, I want to know what that process is, how you 